Hello, Christian. Welcome to uh, our series uh, of mid-century home talks about design. Uh, Christian Paulson um, is expert manager and partner at FinU, uh, which is, of course, one of the main Danish brands uh, with a big heritage. And uh, he will tell us about uh, what they do there. So thank you, Christian, for, be, for being here. Thank you for letting me. So uh, your story, uh, well, the story of your company, it's, it's quite interesting because you have been uh, reissuing many uh, iconic pieces from uh, FinU in the last 20 years, more or less, but the company existed before. Uh, so it's, it's an interesting switch at a certain point happened. Would you like to tell us exactly how that, uh, that went? Of course. So, so under the name One Collection, we've been making furniture since 1990. Uh, and the initial idea behind the company uh, was to manufacture high quality furniture by the best contemporary uh, designers and also the friendliest uh, contemporary designers uh, of that time. And uh, quite quickly, we became well known for making furniture uh, in a very high quality. Um, and that's how we got in contact with Finu's widow. Ten years after his passing, uh, Henne, his widow, wanted to make a retrospective, uh, a retrospective exhibition. But one piece of the puzzle, an important piece of the puzzle, was missing. Um, in 1957, he designed a sofa for the Tivoli amusement park here in Copenhagen. Um, it's a it's a very tight uh, three-seater sofa with uh, wide wings. Uh, a loose backrest and uh, two cushions, so you can also use it as a day bed. Um, but she couldn't find one. So she reached out to us, uh, asking if we could make one piece uh, for this exhibition. Uh, and of course, it was an honor to to work on, on her new uh, design. So we agreed and we made the sofa to her satisfaction. Um, so that was the start of a friendship with Henne. Uh, and a, a bit of time passed and we asked if we could have the rights to manufacture and distribute the Pelican chair and the Poet Sofa. And the Pelican chair had never been in production before. The Poet Sofa had been out of production for many decades and Fenul had been forgotten about. So she allowed us to manufacture the Pelican chair uh, and the Poet Sofa. And as a year or two passed and she said something like, we have such a good time together. Why don't you take up all of Fenul's pieces? Uh, so she ended the cooperation with two manufacturers that made Fenul and gave us the full rights for his uh, for his works. And it all really started as a Connemore project, uh, all with the heart. And it was not at all a success the first 10 years or so, but uh, but patience and hard work uh, definitely paid off. Speaking of, uh, of course, Fenul, uh, his style was... Uh quite different uh, compared to other designers. Uh, it's definitely something that catches your attention when you see it. Uh, but mm. from your perspective, uh, what do you think that made him stand out compared to other designers of his time? So the, the most obvious difference between Fenul and his peers are that he wasn't trained at the, the so-called uh, Clint School of Furniture Design, like, uh, like, like many other famous designers of, of that time. But in a cooperation with Master Joyner, uh, Nils Waller, uh, he really pushed the boundaries for what was possible in woodwork and upholstery, uh, given his lack of knowledge of the material. So he was in no way limited in his, his mindset. Um, so he basically wanted to make furniture uh, for his uh, architectural projects uh, because he didn't uh, find anything that he liked. It was as if Fenul was from uh, a different planet. It was, you could understand that people couldn't understand uh, initially. Um, and um, one other thing is, is his, his use of color uh, was totally unseen before. Uh, when we have sideboards and desks with colored drawers, people sometimes think that that we tried to do a more modern approach with his mid-century furniture. The best example is to go to his house, which is today a museum. Uh, it's a must must visit place if you go to Copenhagen and every ceiling has a different color. Over the window there's colors. His panel systems have bright colors uh, and, and um, it's just, I've been to that house countless times, but every time you, you notice uh, new uh, things and uh, it just makes me appreciate uh, working with him even more. 
he had not only a different approach uh, to design, but also to um, the, the materiality of his designs because of his expertise. And so I can imagine that it might be challenging to reproduce that, to be true to that philosophy uh, today when you, when you work on, on a new product, let's say. So how do you make sure that the furniture that you produce today are 100% true to Finn Yule's original intention? Our craftsmen, both in terms of upholstery and woodwork, are extremely passionate and proud uh, to give life to these incredible uh, designs. Um, but it's not an easy job. Like we need, we need the best uh, people to do it. Uh, and our upholsterers say that Finul must have hated upholsterers because they really didn't make it easy on them. And our woodworkers say the same about their craft. And some of the designs that Finul made uh, or designed were might have been prototyped, but also some of them were, were just just stayed on the, the drawing board because the, the the technology or the craft, the knowledge wasn't at hand at the time. It was more work of an artist than it was of, of, a, of a designer. Um, and, uh, and and that, of course, makes it challenging to, to reissue his, uh, his, his things. Um, one a very good example that, that I'll get into is the, is the grasshopper chair, which uh, he designed when he was 26 years old. It's from 1936. When we tried to make the first prototype of the grasshopper chair according to the drawings, the the result was awful. Like you couldn't sit in 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 the chair. So we we knew that we needed one of the originals because often so many things happen from the drawing board to the work with the with the cabinet maker and the upholsterers. So so we needed an original. So we just had to put it away in the drawer and and wait. Um, and then a few years ago, we. Um, one of these two original pieces were put on auction in Paris at Art Curiel. And, uh, and we made an agreement with them to travel down and, and do all the measurements, angles and everything so we could make our grasshopper chair exactly like the first grasshopper chair. Yeah, it's like you have to reverse engineer uh, the products, right? <laughs> you take one. Yeah, yeah. Someone that buys a fin you will design definitely is a, is a, how do you say, an expert. He appreciate good designs and, and craftsmanship. But apart from the obvious beauty of this species, what do you think it's an added value? Uh, what, what brings uh, in your life a fin uh, piece? Well, Finul's furniture takes you by surprise. Um, he was he was criticized. You know, it's it's very sculptural furniture, and he was criticized also by his peers by to put form over function. Function, but he he was indeed a functionalist, and everything he designed was with the human body in mind. Um, so so Finul's furniture is made to be used. It's, it's not something you put in a gallery. It's not something you put on a po podium. It's furniture that you use is made for the human body. And the Pelican chair, for instance, that name is a nickname. Finule actually designed it as a human torso. So it's a human body holding your body and you can move around in Finule's pieces. That was also sort of a, a, a mantra of his that, that you should you get into a piece of furniture and then you should be able to move around so you can spend hours in these pieces. Um, so you currently, I think, have around 40 designs. Yeah. 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 Are, are you planning to have more? We are definitely not at the end of the road. For you, even though he was not very famous at the time, he was very productive. Uh, so we have so many drawings. We have so many prototypes with so many pieces that have been in production uh, earlier on that, that we want to relaunch. Um, and um, so, so yeah, we have uh, many things uh, that, that we are planning to launch. And um, usually we do that around the, the Milan Fair, uh, uh, which is usually in April. April. Uh, this year it will be around uh, three days of design in Copenhagen, where we will show some. Uh, I'm sure we all look forward to see what's coming. So um, keep us posted. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today, but I want to thank you again uh, for being with us and hopefully we'll see you again uh, live <laughs> for, a, for a longer time. I hope so. Yes. I hope so. so for now, I will uh, wish you uh, a good day and uh, we'll talk to you soon. You too. Have a nice day.